been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out RV Daydream and today I got some stuff going on. Heidi's got some sitting going on. It's her day off. <laughs> She's making some uh, tea here on the porch. That's good. I got the camper opened up and airing out because it is a beautiful day. 81 degrees, a breeze, which you may be hearing on the microphone, sorry about that. And uh, anyways, no, hardly any humidity. So the camper's airing out, as is the awning. Uh, I've got some stuff set out here because I got some work to do. And I got some stuff going on here because I got some work to do. And I got a mower that's waiting to come in. A lot of stuff. I'm not, uh, I'm not short on work, that's for sure. And today I'm going to jump into some of that work because remember how I said I'm easily excited? Ta-da! I got my stabilizer jacks. I'm going to put the link down below for these so you can click on the link. It'll take you to them. Uh, something to look for on jacks. These are 5,000 pound rated jacks. Your static load should never exceed one third of the jacks rating, meaning that this jack can lift roughly 1,700 pounds. My camper only weighs 4,500 pounds and even with it loaded with full tanks and stuff and us and everything else, uh, it wouldn't be over 6,000 pounds. So these stabilizers rated at 1,700 pounds each um, can lift over 6,000 pounds combined and my trailer's not that heavy and you're not supposed to be lifting your trailer. That's the whole idea. These are stabilizer jacks. The rating on these, you got to be careful because technically I could get away with a 2,500 pound jack, but it's not going to do the job the way it should. So I got a 5,000 pound jack. I could have went up to a 7,500 pound jack. The 7,500 pound jacks were a little bit longer than these. Now, there's something else you gotta be concerned with. The distance from the frame down to the ground whenever the camper's level, if it's under 20 inches, you only need a 24 inch jack. And I'm referring to what this jack is when it's fully extended, when it's up in the air. These pads are really nice. Um, and including all these holes, that's kind of nice. I have quite a few choices to drill holes. That's gonna be nice. And again, all these holes are to do is to hold this jack from falling off as you're driving down the road. There's another consideration that you have to look at, and that is the overall height of the jack when it's collapsed and what it looks like on your camper. So let's go over there and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. All right, so we're in the garage real quick and you're going to see some of my kindergarten drawing here. This is basically the trailer. And when you're mounting the jacks, you need to be concerned about this imaginary line that is from the wheel here to the back bumper and from the wheel or tire actually to the front of the camper at the toe hookup, whatever that may be. You do not want to mount a jack too far back to where it hangs down below this line. Same here. You don't want to mount it too far forward to where it hangs down below that line because this is the entrance or entry level line and exit level line of the camper. So if you go into a driveway that has a dip that might be raised, you can imagine what it looks like whenever you're going over it, it's here. And there's a chance the ground might be closer to the jack than it should be and it'll rip the jack off. Same with the back. Whenever you're exiting and there's a rise in the road, you wanna make sure that the bumper scrapes instead of the jack getting ripped off. That's why they make rollers for bumpers because some people have areas that they travel and their campers are long enough that it causes them to drag. With that in mind, you're going to position them within this line and frame, this imaginary line. That way, there's less of a chance of this happening. The other thing is, is the height. Again, when the camper is on level ground, which that's about as level as I can draw, <laughs> uh, 20 inches and under, 
you can use a 24 inch jack for that. If you are above 20 inches, you need a 30 inch jack. In my case, I'm only 19 inches, so I can use the 24 inch jack. And if you find a situation where you're on a hill when you're at the campsite, you can always put blocks of wood underneath your jacks to get the height that you need if the jack doesn't extend far enough, just like you would with the conventional jack stands like I have now. Now you can see I have this imaginary line being represented with this extension cord. I'm talking the yellow extension cord. The black one is the power cord for the camper. If I put that jack all the way in the back, it will hang below that line because even though it looks like that that line's well below the camper, it is until you see the frame and then it gets to be really close, especially in the back. So I have to position the jack far enough up that I'm above this imaginary line and I have a good mounting area. The other thing I'm looking at is the position of this cross member. I want to get close to this cross member for the additional support side to side. You can see where I normally put our jacks and they do a good job there but if I can get away with mounting this jack back a little bit further I would like to do that because the further in the corners I can get it the better stabilized the camper should be overall. What I'm going to do is take this jack, I'm going to position it on the cross member like I want, and I'm going to use vice grips to hold it in place so I can show you another consideration that you have to look at whenever you're buying jacks. And that is how long the jacks are when they're fully collapsed. Okay, so I have this jack positioned and held in place with a couple of vice grips. You can also use C-clamps if you don't have any vice grips. But basically, what you have to be concerned with is this line here. Is this jack sticking out? Now, I wouldn't mind if it stuck out just a little bit, but you got to be concerned about all the weather that would be running down the sides of this camper and potentially on the screw of the jack. Now, of course, whenever the jack goes up, these things, it's not an issue because this goes in as that screw starts to collapse everything. Now as you can see, that jack is much further in than this line that I was talking about. So it's just during transport and when it's up in the air. So you can see I put that jack back out to where it's centered on the frame and after discussing it with Heidi, we think that it's just fine there. It sticks out slightly during the transport position. However, it's not going to be hit or caught on anything unless I'm a really bad driver. I just have it held up there with vice grips. And what I'll do is mark some holes, mark the center of the beam and go ahead and drill. Again, I wanna bolt it on first because I don't want to worry about welding near this gas line that's right here and runs all the way to the front. So it's also near the front on this side. And I don't wanna worry about if I need to take them off for any reason, not being able to because they're welded without breaking a weld and grinding. And what I'm going to do is mount one, make sure everything goes okay. And then at that point I'll position the other three matching the position in the back here using that cross brace as a guide and I'll find a place on the front too. Your main concerns are the height of your frame to the ground being 20 inches or less for a 24 inch tall jack and 20 inches or greater you go with a 30 inch tall jack and then the length, the overall length of the jack to make sure once it's mounted on the frame, it doesn't stick out too far. So let me go ahead and drill some holes, put some bolts what in there. That is a 3 8 inch bit. That's the size of the holes on these. I've got a couple of uh, bolts here that are about the right length. Uh, they fit in the holes just fine. They're not too big, they're not too small. I've got a washer for the head on one side. And then this side here is a nylon nut. Now these are just stuff that I have laying around so they don't really match. They both are nylon nuts, but 
uh, they're different profiles, but I want to first try it out with these and then I'll go buy matching and something that's a little bit better on uh, corrosiveness as far as like stainless or something like that. Okay, you can see here these are uh, 3 8 inch bolts. That's what fits inside there, 3 8 And they're not very long at all. Um, you're talking 1 inch. So 1 inch underneath the head. Um, including the head, you know, of course, it's going to be like an inch and a quarter. And you've got to be careful because uh, you'll see whenever I'm mounting it, I've got to be concerned with stuff that is above the frame that I'm mounting. Like in this case, there's a bracket for a gas line. So you want to make sure that uh, you have enough room for these whenever they're tightened down, that they're not bottoming out into something. All right, so I got the first one on, and you can see here, it looks pretty darn good. I like the way that looks. Now, I was going to come back and show you all of them mounted, but instead, I'm changing the way I'm doing these. I don't know if you could tell during that little clip, but drilling that didn't seem to work as smoothly as I thought it was going to, even though I have a really good drill bit. I have these DeWalt drill bits that have a pilot hole provision that'll drill a little pilot hole but you can see I uh, overheated it and I've tempered the bit so it's probably not going to cut as good as it should plus I didn't like all those hot shavings falling down on my little girly arms <laughs> I don't know if that's uh, <laughs> true or not it didn't bother me too much it's just it didn't go as quick as I thought it was going to because this frame is thick so what I'm going to do is what I mentioned before um, I'm going to weld these on so I don't have to drill and also so I don't have to buy any bolts and nuts and washers because I just looked inside and even though I have a lot of bolts, nuts and washers in the garage, I don't have any that's this length. All right, so change of plan again. I thought I was going to weld, but Heidi heard that I was going to weld and she don't trust my welding any more than I do. I can weld and I've never had a failure and never had a problem, but I just don't like the fact knowing that my weld is holding something to a trailer that's going down the road that potentially could come off and cause a problem. So she went down to the hardware store and she bought a uh, new cobalt bit and the hardware that I need to mount the rest of them. That's funny. As soon as I said, Do you want, I'm going to go ahead and weld those, she said, why? <laughs> and you could tell. So anyways, uh, I'm going to get back underneath. I'm going to drill the holes that I need and uh, go ahead and mount them. So hopefully this time when I come back, it'll right. be done. So there it is. I got them all mounted. You can see what they look like. 
I love it. They are so much easier to do than those other ones. I'm glad I didn't get the 7,500 pound ones because these things are wanting to lift the camper, meaning that once it gets to level and I snug it, if I just do two full turns, this thing wants to lift up. <laughs> it's pretty wild. They do a good job. And the best part about all this is that I no longer have to carry those other jacks inside the camper when we're going someplace. That's it. It's not, uh, not too difficult. I say not too difficult, however, <laughs> this little drill that I have that I bought from Harbor Freight some time ago, the gear stripped out and I've never had a drill that the gear stripped. Usually the motor burns up or something. So I had to borrow a drill to get the job finished. And it's a heavy frame that's on there. Don't, don't kid yourself whenever you're messing around with your trailer frame because that's a serious thing. It's not angle iron, it's underneath there. So it's all done. And again, I can't be happier with the way that it looks and what it feels like inside. I mean, I can move around quite a bit and it's just as stable as it was with those other jacks. So also, I wanted to show you these real quick. These are the saddles for the weight distribution. And I haven't sandblasted or painted them. That's why they're not on the camper. But I've come to find out that that bolt is not really available threaded all the way. It's a carriage bolt. And I cut the head off and then I just welded the nut on the end to make it something that I could turn with a wrench. I went to the RV store locally and the bolts that come with these type of saddles are carriage bolts with the round part cut off. So it's just a square head. And I thought that was kind of funny. So that's what this is. This is a stainless carriage bolt that I cut the head off and then welded on a nut to make it to where it's a bolt now. And then I put a nut on the inside because I want it to secure up a little better once I have it tight, uh, other than just the threads that are already on this saddle. So I'll get these cleaned up and I'll get these mounted but hopefully this will do better than the last one. Okay, that closed this out. And uh, again, the link's below for the jacks. Click the link. I hope that this helped you out somehow and click like or subscribe. And we're getting a little bit closer to where we can go camping a little bit easier. Hope to see you guys out there. Thanks, bye.